Let's go almost there. Come on. Wakey, wakey. What the fuck is going on? Oh, no, she's having a break. No oh. idea. Oh, 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 oh. And there we are. You ready? Oh, yes, I can go the easy way. So what one are we going to start with? The Virgin Ooh. Ghost. Well, I mean, it, Virgin Ghost reminds me of that song. Um, no, no, yeah, no, the song Madonna did, Like a Virgin. I bought the 12-inch of it, took it home. I couldn't play it. There was no fucking hole in the middle. Mm. <laughs> Did you have to break it? <laughs> right, yeah, Virgin Ghost. Hi, Maria. We shall start with the Virgin Ghost. Hello, everybody. Virgin. Hello, Billy. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> we know a song about that, don't we? What have you got, Billy? I've got, I've got a banana. <laughs> no, well, funny enough, I've got a banana over there as well. <laughs> I'm going to peel this banana. Let's count it. Oh, one, one skin. skin. Two skin. <laughs> Three, Three skin. skin. Oh, that's a very big banana. Um, yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you you uh, uh, find us with our hands up our own ass, just um, doing what we normally do, where we just talk absolute nonsense for a little bit until we uh, yes. decide that we're going to crack on with stuff. So one other thing I was, was going to say we are going to talk about today is all the old um, Asian series, or, or you can either do paranormal series or Asian series or all of it. Alien series, wasn't it? Is it Alien series? Yeah. It's it got to be the Series about aliens or paranormal, and I said last week, now maybe we should skip the paranormal stuff because yes, you did. I'm on paranormal Indeed. overload. Um, so we were talking about things like V and and stuff like that. And I've I've, I've actually been watching um, Ancient Aliens, the series on, I watch on that. Amazon. yeah, and I'm quite gutted because they've only got two seasons of it on there, and yes. I got to the last one and. To be honest, when I've sat back and I've listened to every single episode, it sort of actually setting alarm bells off. And some of it makes sense, doesn't it? A lot of it makes sense because when you looked at how they've looked at all of the... Um, of course you can. Um, the, the, the biblical readings, you know, like the Quran and, and, and the Bible yeah. itself, they're all saying the same thing, just in a different context or a different fashion. Do you remember me saying every single event that happens in the Bible happens in every single religious book, yeah. regardless of the religion? And it's Noah's, all the same time. Noah's right? flood. Hey, Andy. Noah's flood is in just about every religious text. Going. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, it's just it's with a different person, uh, you know, but it's the same thing. It's about it's the, a flood that is going to end the world, and he had to collect all the animals. And right. it's in every single scripture. It's, yeah, every and it's, it's, it's even in uh, the um, it's in the Greek one. It's in the Viking stuff. It's even in the ancient Sumerian and Babylonian stuff. So yeah. you know, the, all this stuff that shit that happened. But obviously, different religions are going, oh, my God is the better God. You must listen to us. Yeah. You know, your big invisible person in the spaceship that came to see us all and gave you technology, yeah, he got pissed off with you. Yeah, exactly. And it was it was actually sort of um, quite interesting, like when they're saying about the, the angels coming down and actually giving these warnings to people and, and of certain things that were going to happen or certain things that they had to do. And That's right. when they when they turn around and say, well, when you look at where this being supposedly came down and gave this warning, if you look at it, was it the 33rd parallel or something? Yeah. And it was in line and if I... with um, one of them. It was uh, some mountaintop where the fallen Mount angel was supposed to have landed. No, it was Mount Hermon or something it was called. And when the fallen angels landed on the top of this mount, it turned out it was on the same parallel as Roswell. Ah, <laughs> And you're like, okay, that's oh, a bit weird when right? you look at it like that. Um, and there was, we, you know, we spoke about Tesla. Yeah. We talked about Tesla and his adventures. And when the FBI investigated his murder, they actually discovered that Tesla's death ray 
was actually being looked into and being developed. And they discovered that it was being developed in no other place than the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, or commonly known as Area 51, where the Roswell UFO was supposedly taken. Everything comes back on itself. Everything. Yeah. It, 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 when you when you go back to the very start of everything and the Ani tales of the Anunnaki, when you read that properly and then compare it to passages from ed, every single other religious text, it's the bloody same, just worded differently. Yeah. You know? but, I, I, I mean, just... the, 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 the Hindus, the Mahabharata, that talks about them having battles up in the sky in their Vima, yeah. uh, Vim, Vim, Vimanas? Vimanas? Yeah. Vimanas? Or Vimanas. And they're up in the sky having their big battles. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, there's still well there's still spots in India um that's got radiation in the ground and they they've said it's where thermal nu nuclear radiation has hit the ground yeah millions of what, thousands of years ago you know yeah so, there was, there's an area of there is an area of ground that has been turned into glass and they uh, said for the for the actual for the silicon in the sand to turn into glass like that you would have had to have had a, you know in modern technology a thermal nuclear explosion would be yeah. the only thing that would generate that result. And they've said, but all my aunt's got to make because all of this area is thousands of years old. The technology wasn't there yeah. then. So where yeah. did that come from? Oh, it's one for you to watch. I, I, it, you have to pay each month, but it's, I watch Gaia. Oh, uh, yeah. I've watched a few of the, um, yeah. the sample clips that they've had. One of the series on Gaia that I watched, they've got an an ins and I use inverted commas. They've got a, a, an an insider who used to work um, in some of the black sites, and he, he's some sort of scientist and he used to dissect and this that and the other. And some of the I'm not going to say on here, but some of the things he's come out with. Oh, one thing I will do underneath Nazca lines is tunnels, about millions of yeah. years old, but it's tunnels and there's supposedly a um, an old alien city down there or something. Yeah. But some of the stuff he says, he's either mentally deranged, yeah. his tits, or he's, he's, <coughs> he really is genuine. Because I don't, it comes across as, oh, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't yeah. come across as a screaming nutter. It doesn't come across as a, Somebody trying to get the press or anything, you know, we have all the, the limelight stuff. He comes across as somebody quite genuine. So, yeah, it it certainly is a bit of a weird one. I mean, and in reply to uh, Kerry, yes, they did do um, nuclear testing in Area Fifty One, but we were referring to the areas in India where these sky gods were supposedly fighting each other, and directly beneath that area there are scorched earth hit. areas where there is radiation in the ground and the sand has turned into glass yeah. and the only thing that could have done that was nuclear uh, nuclear testing or a nuclear bomb and the timeline for from the uh, Mahabharat religious text when they talk about the, the wars that did everything and they were flying about and their UFO zapping everybody the hits that, oh bugger they missed him when it hit the ground and blew the hell out of everybody and it turned it to glass, it lines up in the timeline of their religious text, it lines up to the, the yeah. wars that, that they had with the... And it, it lines up with other religious texts and things that yeah. supposedly yeah. went on when uh, the angels uh, had a fight in the sky and smoke and stuff were seen everywhere. So, Yeah. I've always said it always like it, it always lines up and it's the same bloody stuff just said a different way. Yeah, exactly. But there's All been the so many, so many other bits and bobs as well there. Mm. Um, like when they they go on about the book of Enoch. Yeah. He well he, he never died, did he? They they just say he they took him, he went with them, and yeah. he's never died. They've never said he died or anything. So you know, and, and again, with the likes of the Book of Enoch, that there, there are other the other scriptures all have got something similar. Yeah. So they're they're all standing there and they're all arguing the toss over with each other, like you know, like we got at the moment with Israel and um, and, and yeah. Palestine. You know that you have got Christian against Muslim, but it, when you look at it deeper, you know they're all telling the same story, just in a different context or in a different way, but it's ultimately still the same story 
And yeah. you just think, you know, why are you bothering? You know, it's, it's just getting annoying now. Well, the thing is, there's lots of things going on at the moment that have been supposedly uh, foretold. Um, uh, and amongst everything, there has been this particular little spat that's been going on. Yeah. Um, but one thing I found interesting is Obama turning around and saying, not not turning around and saying, you're right there, did you just spit that everywhere? I did just spit it all over my laptop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it first on this show, Wayne is a spitter. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't follow that. <laughs> um. He's, he's, he's not come out and said, oh, yeah, there are aliens, but he has said that there's things up there that we don't know anything about, that the, our government knows bugger all about, and we, we've been tracking it and tracing it and this, that, and the other. Um, it was, when he was pressed on whether we, ha we have any downed UFOs or anything, he, he just said, oh, I don't know anything about that. I don't think we have. But the other stuff, he said, yeah, yeah, there's stuff up there we don't know anything about. Have you heard the latest about the Space Telescope? Go on. Well, obviously, a while back, the Arecibo um, radio telescope in South America collapsed, didn't it? Yeah, that's right. It, it, um, one of the tethers decided it was going to break, and the whole thing just went... <laughs> um, well, they've now decommissioned it. Right. It's no, longer, it's no longer going to ever be used again because it's going to cost too much. However, mm. they have realised that it's cheaper to actually create another radio telescope on the moon. And they have the got a and they've got a crater already designated for the mission. They're going to send a group of rovers up there and they are going to do the tether lines for the um, telescope to be put in. And the company has been given something like five hundred thousand dollars to research it even more to get the mission underway. Do you mean so that they can say that the one that's already there is, oh, look what we did. <laughs> here's one we made earlier. <laughs> yeah, here's one we made early. Because apparently the Chinese are the only people that have actually landed on that side of the moon. As far as I'm aware, yeah, there, there have been close flybys. I think the Indian that we know of. something. But There's Mrs. Ellen. Hello, Mrs. Ellen. Hello. Ah. Yes, that we know of. Hello. There's the... Hello. There's been quite a few things going on up and about in space. There's been lots more triangles, interestingly enough. There's been lots of uh, triangles and some pyramid-shaped uh, UFOs have been seen as well this week. So I yes. do keep my eye on these things, you know. There was there was another one as well I saw earlier on about um, when uh, um, I, I hadn't seen it before. But when you know when the um, Icelandic uh, Icelandic uh, the Icelandic volcanoes. Years a few years back, blew up, didn't they? And there was all these okay. flight bands and stuff. Um, someone had actually got raw video footage of a right. yeah. triangular strip of lights in amongst the ash cloud. That's right. And obviously, they're saying that it is nothing that we've put there simply because none of no no vehicle that we've got would be able to survive going into that ash cloud and yeah. coming out the other side again. What is um, supposed to be, I mean, I've seen some of the pictures and meh, there's supposed to be a dirty great big um, UFO out by the sun, isn't it? And every now and again, it dips into like a, a, an ejection or a corona to recharge its batteries and come out again. So it, they, they, they don't know if it's a, a gigantic spaceship or if it's some sort of scientific thing that's studying shit that comes off the moon. I don't know, but there's something there. Yeah. Almost like that, that weird planet in it that's supposed to be the, uh, the, the Akanaki or whatever they call it that's coming Nibiru. back. Planet Nibiru, yeah. It's, it's yeah. supposed to have been sighted on the edge of the cos of the edge of our galaxy a couple of years ago. And it's supposed to, whatever this thing is, it's getting closer and closer and closer. And the legends yeah. all go back to the Anunnaki coming back to see what the hell we're doing and to reawaken our dormant DNA, the, the, yeah, the stuff I've, that was sealed off. I think it was the, the Anunnaki came here originally and they, they obviously saw Neanderthals and decided to do a bit of gene splicing. Yeah. Um, and the, the what was left of the Neanderthals died off. And then I the don't hybrid, know, you met my in-laws. <laughs> and the hybrid version carried on. And then they would have come back again and done another bit of splicing until we got to modern man. And then yeah. they've, they've slung the rook again. 
And obviously the rumour is that they're coming back again to do another bit of gene splicing. And you get a lot of the conspiracy theorists now. I've seen a few on TikTok over the last few days. Well, some of them... It's, it's quite funny because they're standing there saying, well, this is the reason why we're all having the vaccine for coronavirus, is to get us ready for when the Anunnaki turn up and do more gene splicing. This is the... This is like yeah. the... Uh, I know. The, the the drugs you've got to have to allow them to take you off and do this bit of gene splicing, and I'm like, I, seriously. <laughs> some of the ones, some of the ones I I, I read because I I like to find a thread and then really follow it. You know, um, they yeah. were talking about they're going to do, you know, you got the planes that do the vapor trails and do that. They're basically going to do that, and all it's going to do is awaken certain parts of our dna that's been sealed off that we because you know three yeah. quarters of it we don't use it's going to open up a lot of it so that will become i don't know could be super intelligent i could have a huge penis i have no idea but something will happen well Imagine i mean wake yeah. up next morning you're a horse Ooh. yeah but they're saying there's a good percent, a, a large percentage of our brain we don't use yeah that's right I think it's 70% so, of it, isn't it? Yeah, it's, you know, it's the best part of two-thirds of our brain we don't use. So, what, you know, they can, until they can actually discover what these other two-thirds of our brain is for. It'd be interesting to and see. Like um, we said, it's like a computer with a terabyte hard drive connected to yeah, it, but right. it only uses 200 gigabytes or whatever. You know, and then all of a sudden it's oh, it's time for an upgrade. Well, you're going to need 500 gigabytes for that. Well, there you go, because I've got the storage space. Yeah. So could this be like a precursor sort of thing? Them coming back and they're they're going to unlock the things that enable us to use more of our brain to be able to do other things that will advance human beings. Well, I'm just about to say some of the things I've read have said that um, the tech that they've got, we have to have whatever bits of our DNA unlocked to be able to understand use and it. use that particular tech. And that's why they're going to come back, but they're just going to do it in like a dispersal thing. So we don't know fuck all about it until we wake up and go, I'm Einstein, you know, or whatever, you know, well, there was, um, there was uh, an Indian guy. Um, he had written to, I think it was a Cambridge, Cambridge professor in something like 1920. Hmm. He'd written to this uh, Cambridge professor and he'd written to him in mathematical equations. And this guy actually looked at them and went, I, I can't believe this. this. This, you know, this ain't, it can't be right. These, these mathematical, mathematical equations. Mm. He had seen something similar and managed to translate what they meant. So he was sort of pretty much on the way to actually unlocking what he was writing. But he said that there was nothing that anybody has ever seen before. And now this, this Indian guy's mathematical equations, which he claims has come from a higher power, are now being used to actually look into the string theory and things like that. And they're saying that that is, that is quite possibly the most advanced mathematical equation that they've ever been able to see. Well, look at it now, isn't it? Um, things that were just an idea in star trek like uh, impulse engines and warp engine warp drive now we have impulse engines and when it we were saying they'll have warp drive in what was it 15 years or 11 15 years? years time they reckon they'll have a workable one so there you go all we need is a replicator yep the happy is larry with that anyway that's enough on the <laughs> ufo stuff today apart from the ufo i was going to say the ufo series we uh, used to watch and that, well that we really like v yeah, V was a classic. V, I absolutely, absolutely love that show. My mum um, would let me stay up late and watch it. Yeah, I didn't really care so much for the reincarnated version. It was it was a bit hit and miss that one. Yeah, a bit hit and miss. Um, it, just a modern version, but I think you know when I look back, I I've got the original series still on DVD, mm. uh, and it's literally every every episode, right from when they first arrive, right to the end when Elizabeth goes off with the leader. Um, right. And they blow up the fake shuttle because they know that the resistance might try something, or or yeah. the other the other half of the aliens were going to try something. And when I look back at it now, I think to myself, how cool, hey, how tacky is that? But Robert Englund's first uh, starring appearance, wasn't it? Yep. And when he used to swallow the, the mice, <laughs> I know some girls like that. Yeah. <laughs> 
I never liked Diana, though. She was creepy. Yeah, she was. Well, she was meant to be, wasn't she? Yeah, I never liked her. And um, Battlestar Galactica, where, um, the series where they, they were on Earth and they were trying to find yeah. a place where they could settle and that. Those those bikes that they had, oh, always wanted them. <laughs> but then, <clears throat> again, that's another series that they seriously hashed up. Mm. I preferred the original series. That's what I was on about. I wasn't on about the new the redo of it. I was on about the original. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Is when they did the, the remake of it, they completely messed it up. They should have just sort of left it as it was. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it's um. What else was there? You had Buck Rogers. Oh, I, we uh, What was it? Tweaky. Biggie, 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 biggie. Tweaky. That's good. <laughs> oh no, Sorry. Buck. I'm getting too good at impressions. Um, I was I was walking around Tesco's today, scaring people, going, "Hey, kid, do you want a balloon?" <laughs> Tamsin, Tamsin was loving it. She was going, "Yeah, well, can I have one then, please?" And I went, "Sorry, we're all out." <laughs> dear, dear. Um, and if she and if she said no, I'd go, "They all float down here." <laughs> she was like, "No, okay, Daddy." What was that thing I? I saw on on Facebook the other day. Somebody, it was a, a post from a while back. Somebody's friend had gone to go. The neighbour had gone to go and watch it. And when, when and the neighbour had gone out, got a red balloon and a weight, and they had a great outside. It was in America. Had a great just like that outside their house, and put the fucking balloon in there and said, "They've got this when they come back." <laughs> well, I'm 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 ready to do that when uh, we move in August. Obviously, it's going to be before Halloween, so. What we're going to do is we've got a nice front garden that we can use. So I'm just going to put a couple of helium, red helium balloons on the front garden. And I've got I've got the it costume. So that will resurface for this year. Um, if you want an angry I'll, redhead, I'll ask Taylor to come down. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll sort of uh, sit out there and uh, go, mm, let's scare some people. But the... the they're a bit too conservative down there. They're, they're a bit snobby. They're, it's they're, like where I live in Yorkshire. It's it's a little tiny, I call it a village because it's small, but because they've got the ruins of a cathedral, they say it's a town. Bloody not. But um, you've got like the bit I'm in, which is a nice bit, and then you've got the rest of it, which is, although, although they talk like that, they're bloody posh, you know, and they don't like these oiks coming down here, you see, and it's like... No. It's Yorkshire. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, we have the local neighbourhood watching our, in, in that close as well. So anything, you know, the, it's like she's got sensors sitting at the beginning of the close. Mm. If anybody walks in, she's straight up at the window having a look to see who it is. Um, but every Halloween as a, as a kid, we used to sit on top of the, the front of the door that had a, like a, a flat roof above it at the front of the house. And I used to sit on top of that bit of the roof with flour and eggs and water and stuff. Oh, God. And any of the trick-or-treaters that came to the door, I'd used to egg or flour them. And then for some unknown reason, after about a couple of years after that, there was no more trick-or-treaters. They stopped coming round our close. So I'm like, oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> I think I scared them a little bit too much. So I can, I can remember when my eldest stepdaughter, Zoe, she was cool. How old was she? Must have been about 10, 11. Um, and she used to every every Halloween she'd go stay around her friend's house. And I they had a den, which was an old shed next to an old chicken coop. Yeah. And I I, I went in there one Halloween and I fixed loads mm -hmm. and loads of chains and this, that, and the other, all up with fishing line, and I had it coming through and back into my friend's house. And they were in there in their den, and every now and again I just jank one of that, just screamed <laughs> all bloody night. They were absolutely crapping themselves. Best fun I've had in ages. Yeah. Anyway, That's what I always um, like about Halloween, because you can scare the living daylights out of people and get away with it. Yeah. Like going on investigations with Kerry and scaring the poop out of Kerry when she's walking around <laughs> the corner. We've got, we got to go on another investigation, Kerry. Anyway, uh, we were keeping, keeping in line with our Chinese and Japanese and weird and wonderful stuff uh, for Asian yeah. urban legends tonight. And some bits and bobs <laughs> about Asian... I was going to say Asian virgins. Asian, Asian vampires. Especially that hopping one. So uh, we have ghosties uh, first. We do. Would you like to start with the virgin ghost? Yes. No holes well, in the sheet. Well, 
we we'll talk about the Virgin Ghost. Um, basically, a man was living on the topmost floor of an apartment building, and one night he heard someone knocking on his door. He did not find anyone there when he answered, but he heard a voice telling him to count to a hundred with his eyes closed and without making any noise. He started counting but got curious at 49. He opened his eyes and found the virgin ghost staring directly at him. It is said that the virgin ghosts are most likely to be found in abandoned buildings and they are dressed in white and have long hair. Um, I'm not too sure what to make of, of, of that because... Dressed in white and long hair. So many Japanese horrors. It's like at practically every bloody Japanese horror. The yeah. ring, the grudge, all that stuff. Yeah, and the, and the problem is with that is is obviously there wasn't much um, about the history or the story behind the Virgin Ghost. So um, you could just turn around and say that it's the ghost from the, the, from the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, dressed in white and have long hair. Well, there's so many ghosts that are dressed in white and have long hair. It just seems to be like a, another one that sort of joined in with the group, you know, joined in with the rest of them all and mm. it sort of not really made much of a difference. Well, the trouble is with, 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 well, with Asia as a continent, um, so many, like we were saying earlier before we started, so many um, stories, you've got the same story in each country, they just change it slightly. Like when we yep. were talking about the the haunted toilet, there's there's one in China. There's the, there's the haunted the girl who wears the masks in us in China as well. So uh, we've already covered yeah, those last week. There's a Korean haunted bathroom as well, which you know we've 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 skipped that one because there is there is a, a story in Korea very similar. The, the toilet's haunted, and you get offered red tissue or blue tissue. Same results as what the Japanese and the Chinese one had. So. We've decided we're not even going to go down that road. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I've got an, an odd one here. It's not particularly spooky, but it's just something to warn any of you would-be travellers going to South Korea. Allegedly, um, you'll get kidnapped if you wear headphones in public. Uh, South Koreans believe that listening to loud music on, the, on your MP3 player makes you a target for kidnappers because you can't pay attention to what's happening around you when you're listening to the music. Um, many Korean bulletin boards and blogs post uh, such abductions as a public service announcement. Make of that what you will. Don't wear the earphones in South Korea. But again, also, it's... I don't know, it would be like a, a... Again, it's an urban legend, isn't it? You know, you, you wear earphones You wear earphones in Korea and you're going to get kidnapped, and it's the same as the other one about writing in red. There's How no do you holes in the sheet. That's yeah. how you know it's a, it's a virgin ghost. But no fucking holes anywhere. <laughs> Not even eye holes. It's just a sheet floating there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, obviously it's like another urban legend about writing in red because the Koreans uh, will only use red pens to write the names of the dead and not the living. So you don't write in red pen because it will bring you bad luck. But I wonder how many people actually do write in red without actually bothering about it. Well, over here, it's supposed to be rude to write in red as well, isn't it? But that's because of... Because um, red's an angry colour. Yeah. Well, um, it's another weird one for you. Oysters that grow on your lap. <laughs> well, your knee. Um, it's not really spooky, but it's different. Um, a man hurt his knee and suffered a deep cut uh, in the flesh after falling on a big rock. He washed and bandaged his knee, and when it started itching really bad after a few days, uh, he was reluctant to move the bandage, fearing that the wound would get worse. When he finally did, he found oysters covering his knee. The rock had oyster eggs that had got into his skin, fed on his blood, and hatched. And if he left it long enough, he got an ice string of pearls. Either without a pearl necklace. Mm. <laughs> it's a human fashionista. <laughs> Dear, dear. Some of these are very, very strange. Oh, but when you, you when you get to the vampires, when you get to the vampires, they're weird. You can read the next one. Um, well, I got down as far as ghost money, which again is South Korea. Um, the legend actually talks of the leader of a South Korean mint. Do you um, know, I thought I said monkey. I so misread that. Not as in 
not as in the polo, um, <laughs> as in the money mint. Yeah, yeah. Um, his daughter was abducted, killed and dismembered when he was away on a business trip. And it said that the mint decided to include pieces of her name and images of her body parts on the South Korean currency to appease her ghost because the murderers were not tried, but the mint denied the claim. So did it so, or didn't it? You know, oh, let's, let's, I don't know, let's do a 50 note and stick a severed arm on there. Is that really? what happened to me? <laughs> Somewhere there's a five pound note with the rest of my hand on it. <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that as if that's going to make any difference you know if they, well, if they it, abducted her killed her and then chopped her up into pieces they're sure as hell not going to worry about whether they see a picture of her arm on a five whatever it is no to, to, with that area isn't it all around Asia it's all about appeasing the, the angry spirits Cause remember we were talking about the Japanese and everything's all about honour and appeasing the spirits and everything last week so that's yeah. what that's all about I, I, do you know what? There's one on here that's just caught my eye, and it says sleeping with the cattle. I'm not sure if they're talking about the West Country, Wales, or if this is an urban myth. I don't know. I'll see. Yeah, the one above, I was just about reading the first one, the, the one above it. Um, oh, death by fan. The taxi drivers who harvest your organs. <laughs> oh, them, yeah. There's a few of them um, in London. Yeah, one of the creepy Korean urban legends appeared on a social media cacao talk. According to the legend, a drunken man was stabbed with a needle in the neck after getting into a cab. He woke up in a field and found his stomach open and one of his kidneys missing. The legend is controversial and people think it comes from horror films since some movies include a Korean movie, including a Korean movie, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, have a similar plot. I seem to remember, I'm sure years ago, I saw that when they started, they did a run of them on Channel 4, and I seem to remember something about that. Well, as, um, long, as, as long as someone doesn't try taking on the human centipede, then people will be fine. That's messed up, that film. That is <laughs> fucked up. And number two. <laughs> no, the third no. one's even worse. <laughs> I do No. no. Um... Let's do one, one last one before we, before we go into Asian vampires. Um, do, 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 do. All right. Sleeping with the cattle. An urban legend uh, is about... Well, this is weird. It's about people living in one of the small villages in South Korea. There seems to be a theme involving South Korea. Um, the villagers were shocked to hear a human voice from a mass grave where the cattle that died of foot and mouth disease were buried. They opened the grave and found a human body in the grave and later realised the deceased owed a loan shark. Dozens of other human bodies uh, who also loaned, owned, uh, owed the loan shark were found in similar graves. Uh, that sounds like a piece of schlock horror that's been in tabloid press or something. Yeah. Mm. Can, can, I, can I give out that superstition? Because I do quite, I quite think that's quite... Um, yeah, go for it. I don't think... To be honest, I don't think... It really stands for Koreans. I reckon a lot of people around the world would, would fall for this mm. or would believe this. Um, but apparently there are lots of Koreans are superstitious and they're very, uh, many of them are superstitious about sleeping with a fan being on. Oh, they yeah, yeah. That a fan can suck the oxygen out of the air and suffocate you while you sleep. And other Koreans believe that fans can cool your body until you die of hypothermia. Well, I've fallen asleep in the middle of summer with the, with a dirty red big fan on full blast and woken up yep. just going, oh, it's a bit tepid. So bit tepid. Mm. But then I've always kept me duvet on, so... I'm going to sneeze. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Achoo! Achoo! <laughs> Blimey. The human-faced dog. Oh, that's great. Oh, let's get on there. Um, <clears throat> a man found a human-faced dog. That, <laughs> Oh, that reminds me too much of the fish. And there's, oh, the a human teeth. fish. there's a type of I... fish that actually has square teeth like a human's, isn't it? Bites your cock off. It's a form of um, uh, piranha. But it's, a, it's a vegetarian piranha. can't remember the name of it, but it's a big one. And it's got human teeth. But it's got a habit of anybody swimming in where they are, 
if you're swimming nudie and it sees that little thing dangling down, it goes, Woohoo! It's almost as bad as that little fish that swims up your pee if you go for a wee in oh the God, river. Yeah, that's in Malaysia it, as well. And then it? it's got barbs, it's got barbs on its back that so you can't pull it out. You have to have a very nasty operation. Yeah. Anyway, the human faced dog. Um, this is one of Korean uh, is one of the Korean urban legends which started in Japan. Um, a man found a human-faced dog feeding on the trash under a bridge. The man thought he'd heard someone else, talk it, else talking, only to realise that the creature was partly man and partly dog. The creature disappeared, but the Koreans believe that it was a man who was cursed for living in sin. So, it's a bit of a nice way to go, really, isn't it? A human-faced dog. Live in sin and get turned into half-man, half-dog. Oh, God, that just brings in the whole Shrek thing where Puss in Boots is licking himself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, shall we move swiftly on to Asian vampires, different types of Asian vampires? Let's yeah. start with... Is I'll tell you what, we'll start with number three, Myanmar. Um, the Tibetan but... Myanmar. Because um, we don't ever hear, hear much from those people. Right. The Karen... Karen people. Can I speak to your manager? The Karen people of Myanmar worn You're not wearing a mask. <laughs> Kefin. And the Kefin is a demonic vampire created from black magic. Um, described as a flying head with exposed entrails or sometimes as a canine head demon. The Kef, Kefin, K-E-P-H-N, Kefin, is believed to be a nocturnal form of powerful dark sorcerers. And in this ghastly manifestation, a Kefin hungrily sucks out the souls of its victims. Your soul is mine. Some myths even claim the Kefin uh, is able to transfer ingested souls into other corpses, thus creating zombie servants. Mm. Yeah. Interestingly, the flying head description of the Kefin greatly resembles that of the Malaysian mm, Penangalam. Penangalam. Um, in both cases, the fiends are the results of demonic packs or evil sorcery. Uh, likewise, both monsters are extremely difficult to kill in the night. No wonder it's bloody flying. Um, <laughs> no thanks to their ability to fly. Um, they are therefore best dealt with in the daytime. During hours with sunlight, the sorcerers are still deadly, but with mortal bodies. So remember that, kiddies. Daytime only. I would say because the, the demonic side of them is asleep during the day. But I think it'd be a lot easier to see a flying head coming at you in the daytime. <laughs> um, they've got some fantastic names and weird... They've got some <coughs> really weird stuff, haven't they? Yeah. Do you um, want to talk about the Asswang? The Asswang. Not that Asswang. Sounds, that's that, sounds like, that sounds like spanking the donkey, doesn't it? Um well, I'm glad you said that. I was going to, and I thought, no, Mark, shut up. No, that's spanking the monkey. With an ass, ass wang. <laughs> I'm going to beat this across your body, bud. <laughs> right, well, anyway, this, this particular vampire or, or uh, this supernatural entity it's classed as, not just necessarily a vampire, um, the it's ass wang. Things. The Aswang is the generic name for malevolent supernatural entities in Filipino folktales and can refer to zombies, witches, werewolves, or vampires. The vampiric Aswang itself is described as often taking the form of a beautiful woman, this for the purpose of infiltrating villages. Once it traps a victim, the creature uses a proboscis-like tongue to drain the victim of all its blood. It's a fly. Um, alternatively known as the Mondorugo you know, uh, in the Tagalog language, a vampiric Aswang are also considered as among the most dangerous supernatural monsters in Filipino folklore. The main reason for this being their ability to easily exist near to or even within human communes. Lastly, these malicious killers are said to often marry men for the sake of feasting on their blood. The husbands would be slowly drained night by night till death arrives. The Aswang then moves away to remarry and the cycle of evil will begin again. Are you sure it's blood that's getting... Su no. <laughs> Is that um, a succubus? Or an incubus? Yeah. 
the incubus. That I remember there was an episode of Supernatural that had one of these. Supernatural, Supernatural had one of these things in. I remember that they cut its yeah. its proboscis thing off. Um, yeah, the um, who was who was it? Graham said about the Bajang or Beijang or Bajang. Bada bada bang bang. We, I was literally just about to talk about that one in a minute. Um, so a vampire that sucks you would like a mosquito. Yeah. I'm sure, it's not not. Shouldn't that be renamed Taxman? I mean, there's plenty of them about that do that, mm. isn't it? Um, yeah. That was the Philippines, and now this is Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia. And, exactly is, <laughs> and and in Grim, yes, you're right there, mate. And as Graham said, the Bajang. Um, the Bajang isn't of human form. Instead, this Malaysian folkloric monster is a weasel-like male creature, small and inoffensive at first sight. Said to be created from the bodies of stillborn babies. Noise. In the afterlife form of evil humans, the Bajang's typical victims are children and infants. Uh, according to legend, the creatures would arrive at a household looking harmless and even adorable, so like Senor Puz. You know what he goes? Like that. Um, once it is accepted into a family, it will slyly feed on the young, and after the children are dead, the adults are seldom spared too. Uh, outside of deception, the cry of a Bajang is said to be capable of inducing illness in children. Um, the hellish shrieks additionally have the ability to spread madness and disease uh, in entire villages. In short, if you like European vampires, this nasty monster is one creature you must never invite into your household. So uh, something knocks on the door. Yeah, no. No, See thank ya. you. No. <laughs> Ex-wife succubus. <laughs> I got one of them as well. Mm. Jesus. Sorry. We have an issue with one of our felines. Oh, is it definitely an ass wang then? Uh, definitely. I think it's just ass wanged itself around the kitchen. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll I'll let you read out the uh, next one. Where are we going to go from? We've done. We Malaysia. can always. Oh, Jesus, we can always stay in Malaysia. Go on then. Oh, which one of you guys was that? Oh, that is horrid. Do you want a cork? That is many. <laughs> I think one of them needs a cork. It's disgusting. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll go with the Langsayur. From Malaysia. Langsia, Langsia, yeah, Langsia, yeah. The Langsia Langsia Langsia. is a Malaysian vampire born from the vengeful spirit of a woman who died during childbirth. Can't see a pattern forming here, really, but you oh, know. Not at all, no. uh, beautiful with knee length hair and the unnaturally long nails, a Langsia's favourite meal is the blood of newborn males, although it doesn't mind eating newborn females too. So that's mm. a bit of a. We uh, in some alternate versions of the myths, the Langsua is also described as a flying head with an exposed spinal cord. And I've, I've seen images of this before, yeah. and it yeah. is the depictions they use for this creature yeah. are oh, Yeah, they're uh, not pleasant. So, obviously, you've got exposed spinal cord and entrails. This description notably resembles the Penangalang, which we mentioned before. Furthermore, the Langsua is often confused with Pontianak. Isn't the latter car? also a much feared female vampire said to be born from the ghost of a woman who died while pregnant. On this, historians have highlighted that the Pontianak was originally recorded as the ghost of a stillborn child in Malay lore. The Pontianak is also different in that she eats her victims instead of ingesting blood. To victims, though, such differences hardly matter. The two, beings, the two beings are best not even mentioned or thought of. If you have ever the misfortune of encountering one, you're immediately... Entering one? You've got to be bloody brave. <laughs> have a nice loving relationship with a, a Langtour. A floating uh, head. <laughs> Still, at least your transport would be free. Um, oh, no. <laughs> you stop on her back and get into town for nothing. Save you catching a bus. Um, 
Anyway, if you have a misfortune of encountering one, your immediate instinct should be to run. Like their Western counterparts, East Asian vampires are highly popular subjects in Malaysian and Indonesian horror movies. Well, uh, <laughs> do you know what? It seems to me that um, they're quite messed up with their legends, aren't they? And I know, I know Bangkok's got some serious, or Thailand as a whole's got some seriously uh, ones, but it, it seems to me it's, it's not just Bangkok, it's all of Asia. Pretty much. Um, um, they, they are quite gruesome people when they put their mind to it, aren't they? Just a little bit. That was Malaysia. <laughs> let's let's uh, see if we can Great. find anything better in um, Indonesia. Shall we do Indonesia or Japan? Well, you've got another another version of the Pan Panangalang in uh, Panangalang. Indonesia. You have, you have um, the Layak. Right here we go. The Layak. Is a mythological creature fond of sucking same thing, sucking blood of newborns and babies. The Laic is Bali's version of the Panangalan and is arguably 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ, my teeth tonight. Um a deadly good. version too. Um, um equipped with long tongues and fangs and capable of spreading diseases, Laics are believed to be black magic practitioners with a taste for human flesh and blood. Uh, worth saying, habit graveyards, eat corpses, and have shape shifting abilities. So, ghouls as well. Yeah. Um, most terrifying of it, during daylight, a layak is no different from any other human. Once the night arrives, though, its head and entrails break free from its body. Why does the Queen song come straight to mind with that? Um, <laughs> and this, you can just imagine that Chinese horror flick, and you hear, I want to break free. <laughs> um, <laughs> This horrid Asian vampire then soars across the night sky, gleefully hunting for prey. Um, Layaks are also said to be the followers of the widow rich Rangda, one of the most feared and powerful entities in Balinese mythology. Rangda is the eternal enemy of Barong, the lion like king of the spirits. Uh, if you've ever been to Bali or watched a Balinese culture performance, oh, they're the ones where they do, they've got the really long nails and yeah. they do like that sort of ballet stuff, don't they? Um, chances are you would have already seen the faces of Rangda and Barong. The epic fight between them is one of the most performed Balinese traditional dances. And Rangda is a classic representation of a malicious layak. Uh, seeing her is akin to oh, seeing her is akin to staring at a layak in the face. There you go. Nice. They all seem to be like oh, babies. It's a <laughs> but the problem is in places like China, Malaysia, and Indonesia, and, and that there is an overpopulation. So the next door neighbours, so they all obviously these uh, horrible spirits can't exist because they're getting overpopulated. <laughs> well, apparently not. If these things are going around eating all the kids. <laughs> it's a bit a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> hmm. Um. And then we have, we've got, uh, we can all move on to uh, Nura Ona, but I've got sneaky suspicion we've mentioned this woman before. Just having a read of it, drenched, wet woman. I think we did, but it, it wasn't as in-depth as this one. No. If you want to read it, I'll go for it. Yes. The, the Nura Ona is one of Japan's many yokai, a super, or, or supernatural creatures. It is also one that's certainly not going to be featured in, as a tourist mascot anytime soon. Translated as the drenched or wet woman, a description... Uh, I'm a sorry. Huh? It's translated it, as what? The drenched stroke wet woman. Listen, mate, keep it clean. All right. She's been in the shower, okay? Oh, oh that's all right then. <laughs> She's just had a shower, that's all. She just that's, can't oh. find it. See, she's a lost soul. She's just had a shower and can't find a towel. Where did the loofah go? I'd be annoyed if I couldn't find a towel after getting out of the shower. Um, so, yeah. I'd probably uh, scarred a cat for life if it's all me and I get in the shower. It's a, a description born from her raggedy, raggedly hair. This fiendish Japanese vampire is a human sized serpent with a woman's head, typically found near large bodies of water. Different provinces of Japan vary 
when it comes to the description of them. In all versions, though, the Nura Anna Honor is either a merciless killer or an instrument of murder. For when example, it was murder. the myths yeah. of Shaman or Shamane describes the Nura Anna as the harbinger of a deadlier pig headed monster. The Nura Anna would hand over a bundle that resembles a swaddled child. Thereafter, the bundle would transform, transform into a boulder to trap the victim. A pig-headed monster then arrives to eat the incapacitated... Ah, uh, teenagers! ...incapacitated victim. Um, in another version, the Nora Honor executes the same deception but acts alone. A kind person who receives the bundle would be spared, but any who attempts to throw the bundle away would be similar, similarly trapped. The Nora Honor then slowly drains the victim of blood using her serpentine tongue. Another another Asian country that has a very similar story to all of the others. <coughs> I'm just looking for something that's slightly different. I'm not going to read about the Penangalan because we've already done about <laughs> three different versions of that. Um, what about the, the Polong? Polong? The, I was going to say the Polong or Polong. Polong, Polong. Polong. is quite interesting. Um, right. The Polong, oh God, it's a, a homonucleus, which is basically a tiny human shaped thing. Uh, Polong is more of a familiar or, or homon, homonucleus. I can't, I can't, I can't talk tonight. Homonucleus, homonucleus, homonucleus. I don't know how to keep saying I don't know. That. I'm still trying to find the word. Polong. The Polong is more of a familiar or homonucleus. It, it just means like, like a, go, a golem or golem is a homonucleus. Um, in, Malaysian folktales. Rather than a vampire, it's around an inch tall, about that big, and female in gender. How the hell do you see that? I don't bloody big mic. Polongs are used by black magicians to enact vengeance against enemies. Uh, and according to legend, polongs attack victims by possessing them. A victim also then is then delirious until the polong is skillfully exercised or they die. As for how uh, how polongs came to be associated with Asian vampires, this is likely due to the gruesome ritual used to create them. A black magician must first collect the blood of a murder victim in a bottle, uh, following which incantations have to be recited for 17 days. Uh, when the sound of chirping birds is heard, it signifies that the polong has taken form and is ready for orders. Uh, Thereafter, the black magician must still feed blood to the polong daily to keep the creature in service. It's thus only reasonable to assume polongs, like Western vampires, depend on human blood for sustenance. But I would have thought, if you've got an, an inch high private eye coming towards you with its fangs out, just, just stamp on it. <laughs> bugger off, you little bugger. <laughs> you'd be like, swat it, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, if you had yeah. one home coming this house, the cat would have had it within five minutes. <laughs> You wouldn't have you to feed him. That? You wouldn't have can to feed him that? much, would you? If it's only you an inch high. No, no, but can you imagine that? You'd be like, what the bloody hell's the cat dragged in? <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, um, I don't, do I want to get rid of that? You go, out, out, take it out. <laughs> Put it back in the bottom of the garden. But then, oh. what do you think about it? If it's only an inch tall, right, you could just offer it your own blood because you to actually give it the feed that it needs every day it wouldn't actually affect you the amount of blood you'd have to give it it's only an inch tall no i wouldn't but i mean would you really want and like stick him get him he need my yeah, spot. I mean, I've, I've force fed mosquitoes before when they've landed on my arm i've let them bite me on purpose and then i've got them puff my arm up and squeeze my arm to force feed the mosquito until it explodes <laughs> That's because there's something sick and twisted about you, my friend. <laughs> I was doing it as an experiment to see whether it worked, because I'd heard that the, the, the bit that they stick in your, proboscis. Um, your arm, the proboscis, when they put it into your arm to suck the blood out, if you squeeze your arm, it, it, it stops the proboscis being taken back up into the mosquito's mouth. Hmm. So, of course, I squeezed my arm and, and I tensed my arm muscles to allow the blood to pump through, and you could see the back end going... And, and then it split. Um, it was a bit messy, but it was fun. 
Don't try this one at home, kiddies. Well, the poor things only live for a day anyway. What's the problem? Do you know what? I I I can remember. They're totally separate. I hate midges and mosquitoes, and the whole and, and like if I hear one in the bedroom. I have oh, to put lights on and I have to find it and kill it before I can go to sleep. doesn't matter what. And the reason for this is where I used to live in Surrey when I was a teenager, there was one summer's evening. I was about 17 years old, I think. And I was turning the lights off and going to bed. And I could hear them. Yeah. Turn the lights on, found it, killed it. Light off. <laughs> put light back on again. There's another one, killed it. 27 mosquitoes in my bedroom that night. Yeah. 27 of the bastards. And there's ever since then, if I hear it, that's it. Got to there's it. nothing worse when you're trying to sleep and you've got a mozzie in there. I mean, we obviously when we go on holiday to Corfu. We always make sure that um, my mum or my sister has managed to buy a, one of the plugins, the mosquito repellents. Yeah. And we'll go in there, and then before the kids come in, we'll go around the room with the, inspe- in the, the mosquito spray as well, just to add to it, just to make sure there's no mozzies in there. And for ever telling the kids off, because they'll go out onto the balcony and leave <laughs> and leave the door open. And you're like, no, yeah. you let the mozzies in. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And they end up crying because we've told them to shut the door. You know, and it's... Um, it's... It's, what it is. Think. it's nothing worse when you're trying to sleep. And yeah. you can hear it buzzing around your head. Yeah. It's got it's got that blood radar, isn't it? It's, it's like, oh, this is human there. Let's go get well, some dinner. Well, and and well, next minute is... you sit there going, and you can hear it by yeah. your ear. Yeah. But it seems no matter how close it is to you, you hear it regardless. Yeah. And it don't matter when you do that to swat it away, it's still there and you're like, okay, so how far has it gone? Next minute you know your arm's outstretched. You're smacking your partner around the head because you think it's on her or, or that direction. And you, you you spend half an hour trying to swap one mosquito. And in the end, like you say, it's switch the light on and then search for it. Well, the thing is, I don't wear anything in bed. So I don't particularly want to wake up in the morning with a third bollock. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, I have to find the thing. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think we're not going to do the uh, Zhang Shi tonight because there's a lot of information there. We'll, we'll leave that for some up for next week or something um but i thought we'd t- uh, talk about this suki suiko 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 i don't even know how you pronounce sweet you could always just say water tiger instead because that's what it means water tiger yeah yes. s-u-i-k-o suiko yes i we think we think it's suiko um i have a friend um i have a friend on my para unity thing chat um irene uh she would probably tell us um what that mm. uh, how to pronounce it but um it's so i i would say it was suiko uh means water tiger in japanese um and they are greatly similar to the appearance to the famous kappa that's like a Un- turtle thing isn't it yeah unlike mm. the kappa though they are uglier and far more violent some myths also claim that Suiko um, are the tribal leaders of Kappas. These depictions portray the monster as each leading a band of 48 Kappas. As for the wickedness they are most feared for, Suikos, Suikos are fond of dragging humans into rivers and lakes, following which they would drain their victims of blood again and feast yeah. on their souls. Doubly disturbing is the belief that these monsters do not kill for substance, sustenance. They do so purely to appear strong to their Kappa minion, i.e. to stay in authority. Got to be, they've got to be the alpha male. Yeah. Um, in turn, Kappas mimic such killings to impress their boss, thus setting into motion a terrible cycle of murder. For the poor peasants of rural Japan, the only way to protect themselves from Suikos is to avoid deserted bodies of water, to scatter flax seed around their dwellings or to perform an, aw- an awful ritual. Now, this ritual involves luring a suiko into a compulsively prancing by using the decaying body of its victim. After the corpse is completely decomposed, the suiko will lose all its power. Thereafter, it perishes too. And then, obviously, unfortunately, it goes on to the Jiangxi, which we said we wouldn't go into. It's a good, big, long bit. 
it's rather large and long-winded. Well, thank you for noticing. The trousers are quite tight today. Um, well, for like, we'll do a little. I'll do a quick bit of it. Zhang Shi was the one I was talking about last week. The hopping vampires that go dink, dink, and you can stop it by putting a prayer on its head. Um, hopping vampires, Zhang Shi, are a type of undead creature found in Chinese folklore. Uh, the Chinese name is often translated as Chinese hopping vampire. It's literally its literal meaning is stiff corpse. Mm. Um, these creatures may be identified by their attire, which is the uniform of a Qing dynasty official. Uh, additionally, the Zhangxi is recognisable by its posture and movement. The arms of these creatures are permanently outstretched, uh, apparently due to rigor mortis, and they hop rather than walk. Uh, as a result of the stiffness in their bodies, there are many ways to turn a corpse into a Zhangxi, and as many ways to defeat them. Uh, the undead creatures appear in quite a number of Chinese films. They do, and they, they appear in different guises. They do have that uniform on, though. All the films I've seen, they've got the same uniform on, but nearly all the ones I've seen, they're like that. And they go, doink, doink. <laughs> but they're just like my favourite ones because they, they, they hop, and then you, you, you get a, a post-it note with a prayer and go, ding, and stick it in the middle of their forehead. And that's it. They're screwed. They stop. They, that's it. They can't go anywhere. So that's it. You literally just go, ding. That's it. Game over. Ah, <sighs> rubbish, really. One. And today was episode forty of the new show. So there you Long. go. Mm, it's been forty shows we've done so far. Wow. No Seems a bit tough. Yeah, isn't it? Huh? Seems a bit weird. I seem to be doing. Really... A, I seem to be doing a lot of these little show things lately. I was mm. on. I was on uh, the past PTS show on Wednesday. With um, I think it's Brandon Kreitzler in uh, America, and um, oh, it was uh, quite interesting to say the least because I didn't I didn't sort of really um, expect um, for him to actually sort of go back right the way to my first ever experience of the paranormal. Um, you know, I thought I was just going to be talking about me books, and then we ended up talking about the paranormal, and he said, "What?" We haven't covered anywhere near what we need to cover, he said. So we'll have we'll have to have you back next month. So I'm back on the show again on it. the sixteenth. Back on Go there again it. on the sixteenth of June. So it um, well, was it's quite like, interesting. It's like James. I think James knows or probably remember this. This show's been going for call what we now. It's got to be four four years now, um, in various different forms and guises and. Yeah. I love doing it. Absolutely love doing it. Occasionally, I'll go on, uh, like yourself, I'll go on other shows across the pond and stuff. But this is this is my baby. I, lo I love love doing this one purely because of the the laid back informalness of it. I think you know? I think that's that's the best thing, isn't it? Because you're not restricted um, yeah. so much, and you can just have a laugh. Mm. You know, you can you can have a subject and you can discuss that subject. Oh, blimey, that's creepy. I just, one of the cats just touched me leg. Um, I didn't even see a creep up, and I think that's the one. That's the one that made the the rather horrible smell. So, the rare and stealthy sofa bifen. Um, but yeah, um, you know, you, you, we can have conversations. We we talk with everybody that's in the chat room, and and it's just a good bit of banter, and and it's a yeah. bit of fun as well as being sort of fairly informative at the same time. And I, and I think it helps that which I just enjoy doing it. Yeah. So I think you, you do as well. Because I mean, you've got to admit the, the, the amount of jokes and stuff that we, we come out with all the time. I can't take anything seriously. The, the problem is, is, is that. Thank you, James. You know, it, it's like the theory that I have in schools. If you make the lesson boring by just giving out the facts, the children aren't going to absorb that information as much as if you made it entertaining. If you make that child laugh or giggle in the process of teaching them that yeah, yeah, yeah. bit of information, they're more likely to absorb it and and remember that information than if you just stood there and went. Rah, 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 rah. When I teach kickboxing and martial arts, I always inject it with humour. I'm always cracking jokes and this that, and the other, and it it does you, you, it sinks in and the muscle memory. Yeah. It's been proved it acts a lot quicker than it does if you've got the same boring stuff all the time. It's the same with, I'm not going to mention any show's names, but it's the whole reason the Dark Mirror started was because 
some of us found a lot of shows exactly the same monotone <clears throat> it's either monotone yeah. and boring or up the arse of the, of the guest so and it's like no we don't want any of that we we like a good laugh and we'll start doing it so we have a good laugh and we go off topic come back on go off on a different topic go out the door down the road a bit get to the shop get some booze come back and go back on topic again you know yeah and yeah. don't forget to use the ass wang to get to the shop exactly because you can just hop on the head <laughs> like, yeah damn you <laughs> You know, you save your carbon footprint. You know, what's the point in walking and wasting all that energy when you've got an Aswan nearby? You could just hop on her back and off you go. When they a band in the 80s? No, oh, that's Aswad. That's the one. <laughs> oh, you're awake then? Hang on, My hang on. God, I can remember that. Oh. Say hello. Bye. Hello. She's been asleep all evening. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can't believe I remembered that. Well, Aswad. Yeah, well, it means Aswad. it's it means black in Arabic, doesn't it? That's what it means. It, as, that's what it means. That Aswad is Arabic for black. Oh, okay. uh, if you say so. You've, you, I mean, you've, you've got to be. I think the only way you can actually be into the paranormal or all the stuff that we're in, you've got to have a warped sense of humour with it as well. Because if you don't. <laughs> You, you, it's going to be too serious. Yeah, I think, you know, it, you've got to have the sense of humour because, you know, you're talking about, you know, especially especially on the ghost side of things. Yeah. Um, you know, you can come across a spirit that will make you sad because of the circumstances they yeah. were in. And when we had that when we filmed at Dunnage. You know, we come across a, an eight-year-old girl that had died um, she hadn't realised she was dead, but she was waiting for somebody, Ooh. and we Love felt that. really, we felt really sad about it because mm. she didn't realise she was dead. She was only a child. Did anybody help her move on? Um, well, I personally think she attached herself or, or followed Ellen because. Um, after oh, is left, that the one you were telling me about? After we left that area, and and I've listened, um, I've seen the episode before it's been made public. And you do hear footsteps come up behind us. And we all turn around with torches on and there's nothing there. Um, and we, reckoned it was, we reckoned it was Charlotte coming back with us to the car park. And then later on, when we went back to the cars, a motion sensor light in the boot of my car was going on and off constantly at random. Mm -hmm. um, and that particular light, if it switches on, it will stay on for exactly one minute and then it turns it, it resets itself and turns itself off, ready for it to be moved again. And as we were watching it in the car park, it was the light was coming on, and it would be on for like 35 seconds, and then it'd go off. Then it'd come on again, it'd be on for five seconds, and then it'd go off. And it was almost as if someone was doing the switch. It's only got one yeah, simple yeah. on and off switch, yeah. but it was as if someone was sitting behind the, in the in the boot of the car, flicking the switch on and off, and we watched it as we were walking across the car park, and I reckon that was Charlotte as well. Trying well, to get our that, attention, so it was uh, a bit weird. Well, on that note, I am going to... Uh, we've actually left it on a spooky one. About <laughs> bloody time and all. On that note, I shall say thank you for listening, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday with Taylorius Maylorius with the rearview mirror on... Nine o'clock, nine o'clock, Sunday. And you're back on when? <laughs> Sometime. Yeah. Same time next week, I reckon. Oh, there pocket. you go. Next Friday when we will have decided what show, we, what we're going to talk about next week, because I've got no idea at the moment. We'll think of some random, random stuff. <laughs> so uh, it is a good night from him. I did it first time. Look at that. And it's a good night from him. So thank you for that, James. Uh, top guy, top bananas. See you later, mate. Yep. See you all soon. Bye. Bye.